What's good, y'all? It's your boy DJ, Infamous Web 3 music producing light skin VTuber. <laughs> yeah, oh gosh. Y'all probably seen your favorite VTube idol or favorite person you frequent streams with posting covers or original songs of their own on Twitter or any other media and ask, how can I do that? What do I need? What programs do they use to sound good? So basically, I'm taking the time today to show you guys how to do that. You ready? <laughs> As many of you are out there with the talent to make sound via an instrument, your voice, or any of that to showcase your talents, you probably may see from professionals, probably people who are a little bit more established with having built-in computers, MIDI keyboards, mics, sound amps, audio interfaces, monitors, and all that mumbo jumbo. Some of y'all may be just starting off with some headphones, a PC, laptop, or mouse, like me when I got started, you know? If you make music on your laptop or computer, your digital audio workstation or DAW will be the most important thing for you to actually get started. It's important that you actually find a DAW you as an individual can be happy with. Find something that inspires you to crank out tunes quickly, easily, and for something you can actually come back to anytime you feel like making music. Now, this video is not for me to state that one DAW is better than another one. I've already witnessed way too many turf wars on like Facebook and other <laughs> social media platforms because of it. Trust me, you guys don't wanna see the Facebook arguments on the Fruity Loops page. I see it every day. <laughs> Any DAW out there is a tool you can use to pump out phenomenal music. You can meet your full potential as long as you follow proper fundamentals, experiment and basically just keep learning, you know? So each digital audio workstation is slightly different in their own way. Most should offer demo versions at trials for you to get a feel on how they work, which I highly encourage for you guys to try out. I've actually experimented with many dolls over my years of doing it, going from weird piano apps on my phone to freaking Mario Paint Composer to GarageBand to when I first got in college and my college buddies introducing me to FL Studio, which 10 years later, I find myself using now. <laughs> Here's the thing though, y'all. So when it comes to actually choosing a DAW or basically getting good at music or learning whatever like tool you're using, choose one, learn it and stick with it. Don't give up music just because some sounds may not be as good as probably your favorite musicians are. It's gonna take some time to build, you know? So a DAW is literally a canvas and you are basically the pencil. Keep in mind that there are well-decorated people out there that are still learning new techniques, mastering their DAW nowadays. There are Grammy winners that used FL Studio for years, and they're still finding out new techniques that other people, much less than them, actually probably gotten used to. The idea that someone will bounce around different DAWs trying to make music or make covers to just start it, realizing that music they create may not be as good as someone else compared to someone who's been using it for years is ridiculous. It'll take time and you have the capability to develop that talent to do so. As said, it's gonna take some time. Basically, don't give up. Don't give up. I will say there are many websites that list these dolls under a legitimate ranking, so I'll give y'all some of my personal recommendations based on the ones I've come across. Keep in mind there are many, many, many factors out there in choosing a good workstation. It'll come down to basically utility and workflow. You gotta ask yourself, do you wanna produce your own music? Do you want to just sing or work on vocal mixing? Do you wanna do sound design? Do you wanna have pre-built-in sound effects? Must you download your own third-party instruments? The second thing to look for is ease of use. Do you want to have intimate or innate control over everything? Do you wanna just drag and drop loops? Do you wanna have a really good piano roll and mixing board to have control over your sounds? What is the DAW compatible with? Windows, PC, or Mac? And of course, price. Here's some of my top recommendations as far as that. Starting off on what I already have, FL Studio. As said over the years, I've personally been using FL Studio due to the lifetime free updates along with its legendary piano roll automation and so much other stuff bro fl21 came out well and i have the option to change themes and colors along with doing certain tricks such as clip gaining as the earlier versions had actually lacked in comparison to other ones like logic GarageBand, ableton and reason there are many pre-built-in effects and generators vsts along with hidden plugins and options to manipulate samples some of the bad things that probably will come with fl however is that it's intensely cpu based for example if you don't have like a really good like processor or any of that stuff 
things can get really grubby and if it goes past like a certain like MB thing or whatnot, you will be experiencing a lot of crashing and it'll be very easy to lag. The mixing board is not visible on the arrangement board just like with other dolls. Due to its complexing on sound design and all this stuff, FL Studio is meant more so for electronic music producers as complexity for achieving sound designs may deter folks away from ease of use. Also given for beginners if you don't have basic knowledge on routing or busing instruments on this mixing board, things can get pretty messy and complicated. Also it doesn't sample live sounds as good as Pro Tools, so recording may be kind of grubby. Some of the prices that may come with it would be around $99 for the Fruity Edition up to $3.99 for the full bundle. Okay, the next one we have up on our list is Ableton. So the reputation of Ableton stands to be Fruity Loops competitor and has been proven to be a great, great, great doll. Awesome for beginners and intermediate producers and musicians to get into. Ableton is actually known to be a rack based doll, which one of the advantages it has over Fruity Loops is that it's much neater to lay down ideas and have an easier workflow with windows not popping up everywhere on any new selection or effect or VST that you choose to work with. Let alone everything is all on one screen so it would be much easier to see and use. Some argue due to the features of organization of this doll and due to all of the ideas it's put into, people actually made the switch over from Fruity Loops to Ableton due to this. However, there are some limitations that may come to it. Clip selections may be a little bit difficult to actually get used to using, and Ableton does not have the same automation or manipulation of sound that Fruity Loops does. And this is based on me actually using it and trying it out. Experiences may be a lot different for other people who may have made the switch. However, the effect rack and grouping has been said to be a lot easier and convenient for users. And also some of the stock instruments that come with Ableton are actually very powerful within themselves. So the price ranges may go from $99 for the live intro to live suite bundle going up to $749 itself. All in all, the funny thing about Ableton and FL is that these two are honestly the most argued as far as which one is the best doll. However, both of them actually go down as the top two for music production alone and basically instrumental and beat creation. Regardless, choosing either or will lead to making a solid selection. Okay, now we go into Pro Tools. Pro Tools is actually known as the industry standard around the world for a professional studio recording. It is the industry standard for vocals, known for recording live sound, editing, and publishing. If you were to book a studio session to record vocals, a rap, song, or anything in person or whatnot, nine times out of 10, your sound engineer will be using Pro Tools to record your section. Session. Some of the pros for actually utilizing Pro Tools is the fact that it gives a whole bunch of opportunity for a lot of people who are seeking to work in a professional world. Basically, knowing how Pro Tools work due to it being one of the top things in the industry opens up doors and opportunities for you to work in a professional field. One of the pros for having Pro Tools is that there's an integration across large projects. So you can actually upload this to cloud and collaborations with other producers, despite how big the project may be, can actually be transferred fairly easy. Pro Tools is designed to work well for each different type of genre out there to so whereas like people who are really focused in mixing and automation can actually go balls to the walls on this. Just like FL, you can pretty much like mix almost anything and create automation tools and other modulations to get that right mix you need. Some of the cons that may come with Pro Tools, however, is the fact that it's a monthly subscription base. You don't necessarily buy Pro Tools, but more so renting it. And for a perpetual license, could actually go up to $600. Another con that's actually been shown on Reddit is that there's been a record of Pro Tools just crashing out of absolutely nowhere. I don't know what to say about that one. It probably is like another issue with Pro Tools crashing due to the amount of RAM that you may need in order to actually run it. 
So the next one we're gonna tackle is Reaper. So I've personally been seeing a lot of VTubers and content creators use Kako's Reaper. That seems to be a fairly affordable, like $60, $225 for a commercial license, according to their site. And it seems to basically be a pretty reputable one for vocal processing and mixing based off of what I've seen on the content. It placed number six on the musicradar.com and it seems pretty solid for the ease of vocal mixing and performance. So one of the immediate cons is that it doesn't come with a lot of plugins a lot of people who actually had been using it needed to download certain sounds certain instruments certain plugins and all that stuff in order to allow reaper to be usable which i'll go to recommending plugin fox for finding some deals on higher end plugins or dsk instruments for free instruments just like Pro Tools and Live Studio, Reaper is actually known to be very good for live music recording. So I can definitely see how it's a favor for people who are trying to record covers or vocals with it. One of the fun things that I actually found out about Reaper is that you can actually customize, build your own menus and build your own mixing rack. To making it customizable much like FL. It's a very, very lightweight DAW, arguably the most powerful DAW on the market. And the best thing about it is that you can actually load a lot of instruments on there without worrying about it crashing. Okay, the next one we're gonna go on is Logic Pro. So Logic Pro actually is very compatible with Apple and it actually can import GarageBand files. This one is very, very easy to use. And in my opinion, it probably has the neatest layout of any DAW that's actually out there. There's not as many built-in plugins like FL or Ableton, but it definitely can get the job done. With over 50 plugins needed for mixing, mastering, and vocal work, you can actually get some pretty solid stuff in. It's favorite for having some of the most versatility. You can manipulate audio pretty well along with sample chopping. Much like Fruity Loops, Logic requires a one-time purchase and updates are actually free for life. So you'll actually save more money down the road doing so. For anyone that uses native instruments, native supports the new M1 chips for the Mac, which is better for pitch manipulation tools and stuff for correcting vocal recordings and such. And some have said that this actually could be a great alternative to Pro Tools. Some of the cons that may come with it is that you may be required to buy more plugins if you want to have the best results and it can actually use a lot of RAM. So if you're using an older version of the Mac, you may notice some hiccups. As said, it's also built more for recording live sound than sound design for computer mouse building. So the piano roll and all that stuff may be pretty limiting as well. Its standard price will go up to $199 and there's not really too much to be said about it. Logic Pro is a pretty good choice. Next we'll go into GarageBand. Unironically, GarageBand is known as the big brother to Logic Pro. However, GarageBand is also known as many producers' first experience within music production. GarageBand is known to be free and it is available for any Mac or any Apple product that people may have in their possession. Even though it's more so geared for casual musicians and producers, GarageBand is still an excellent tool for creating music in today's age. As said, people can be able to transfer files from GarageBand into Logic Pro due to the integration of Apple is actually known to be great audio editing for really quick podcasts and also just lay down something really quickly. All right, next up is Bitwig. This was another DAW that I've seen many tutorials on along with other great streamers using this to pump out amazing tracks from. So Bitwig actually takes a lot of concepts from Ableton Live given that people who work for Ableton actually help develop the DAW. Given that there's a lot of concepts from Ableton, there's a lot of control as far as editing functions, pre-built in plugins, and it's also a rack based DAW that allows an easier workflow for things to not get as cluttered all over the place. From what I've also seen, grouping and bussing is in a folder format, which makes things a lot more easier to mix. You can basically color code all of your racks to make things a lot easier. On the bottom is where a lot of your effect racks and all the stuff will go into and is pretty compatible with 
a MIDI controller. It sells at an investment around $300. Next up on the list is Cubase Pro. So Cubase is actually known to be used from very famous composers who have worked within television, video game, or film industry, such as Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL. I've seen some of my friends actually use this to compose actual works for accredited video game, and it seems to be pretty good for a choice for DAW. The customizable workflow makes it easy to create a template that works for you. You can edit multiple MIDI parts simultaneously unlike other DAWs. It's a cross-platform DAW that works on Windows and Mac computers, and you don't need a USB dongle for it to work. You can be able to create a new project with a huge number of pre-organized tracks without any difficulty. Cubase will be coming in at a price around $579.99. So we ended up doing a deep dive into some DAWs that probably require around hundreds of dollars to basically get started into. However, just a reminder, there are some free dolls for anyone who may be tight on a budget to actually try out if they wanted to experiment with music production. For example, Cakewalk is actually a good doll to look into. Cakewalk, developed by BandLab, was originally sold around $600 before it got discontinued. However, its impressive feature set make a really formidable DAW to use. It is ranked to be the best free DAW today, so most of your monies can go to buying good VSTs inside of it. If you need a free DAW that won't limit your creativity, this would be the one to go to. However, the only drawback for Cakewalk is that it's only available for Windows computers. So for time takes, we're going to try to limit the review of other DAWs that are actually out there. However, there are some very honorable mentions, free ones such as LMMS or Linux Multimedia Studios, Reason Studios, and even simple vocal layout formats such as Audacity. All in all, as far as a conclusion, Choosing a DAW is a very personal choice and it requires a lot of research to actually understand and know what type of realm you will be getting into. As said and repeated, don't give up if it doesn't work out for you. However, try to stick to that DAW to learning it like the back of your hand. When you get to that level of understanding how a DAW works, you can actually crank out better tunes. As said, it's going to take time to basically learn how to work, just like how it takes time to learn a different skill and all that stuff. Once you realize the capabilities of whatever DAW that you were working with, to its maximum potential is where you can really make things pop. Whichever that you choose, you can make great, great stuff. Just believe in yourself and know that you are worthy and you are valuable to cranking stuff out. Remember, music creation is supposed to be fun. With that being said, my name is DJ Afterburns. I am going to head out and I hope you enjoyed this video. You all have an awesome day. Yeah.